Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. <clears throat> what I do know is that I've got a frog in my throat. <laughs> This is 4F Beauty, and if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. So, the thumbnail, the title, and if you have read any of it, the description will have informed you that this is a first impression review and associated tutorial of this little beauty. Now this is the Chinchilla palette from Sigil inspired Tammy Tanuka. So if you want to find out exactly what she looks like, how well or otherwise she behaves and what I'm going to Twitter on at you about today. And my friend. Some of the sloth straw feels that you have the best seat in the house. And that it is now time to grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I would have shown you this in the intro. This is the um, sigil-inspired Tammy Tanuka Chinchilla palette. But I've got to show you, when this arrived, it was wrapped up in this gorgeous paper. It had the string wrapped around it because obviously I cut the string because I didn't want to damage the wax seal. But look at that, she's even got her own little wax seal that she puts on it. How cute is that? It's just adorable. Um, I've got some of her loose pigments. Oh, that's hubby just coming in the back door if you're wondering what that is. Um, I've got some of her loose pigments here which I bought earlier last year and I've got the the frog set of green ones and then three other random ones that I picked out that I thought would look good but I didn't actually get around to filming with them last year which I do apologise but I did get them last year um, <clears throat> but then I noticed that she was doing these pressed palettes. She did this one, I think it was a dragon one. Now the dragon one was very warm toned, bronzy. We know that's not my style. If you haven't already seen it, could this scream more me in terms of colour story? Grey, lilac, lavender, purple. And that one is a little bit of a, a, got a bit of a shift to it, like a duochrome. So I'm a very happy girly. Um, <coughs> Fibro has taken all the words from my head and mixed them up and is refusing to spit them out of my mouth. It's been a while since I've filmed. Um, this is still a teaching channel, so by virtue of that, I will of course insert my usual clip where I talk you through the difference between um, deep set and hooded lids. Um, that's very up close and personal, it's just my eyes on screen and that's how I film my tutorials. It does mean when I'm looking down to clean a brush, change colours, etc. You get a shot of my hairline, but it also means that if your eyesight's not what it was and you're watching me on a phone, you can still see what's happening. You can you can clearly see what I'm doing. 
Um, I also go at a speed that everyone can keep up with, partly because of my chronic pain um, and partly because I want beginners to be able to keep up with me. And that's another one of the reasons that I zoom in so close, because then you can't see when I'm pulling faces because of pain spikes. At least hopefully you can't. Right, I'm going to insert that clip just now, and then I'll be back at the other end of it to um, start applying some coloured pigments to my lids. See you in a couple of seconds. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just 
sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I'm going to start off with a fluffy brush. This is a Spectrum B06. It is clean, it's just stained. Um, for ease of reference, I'll just call these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 for you. Because I think I've got the translations right, but I might not. So I'm going to start off with number 3, which is like um, a very cool toned lilac. Reasonable amount of kick up in the pan. This one here. But nowhere near as much as Anastasia. Just to give you a bit of a contrast. Now I'm going to do my usual, which is the Viennese Waltz of Blending. So that's natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do this is I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. <clears throat> but I know teenagers with beautiful figures that have always been slim that have this similar issue. And if you just rely on the windscreen wiper, that's when you can get your lid folding over. You get the telltale white stripes or tiger striping, dead giveaway. Whereas with the Viennese Waltz Blend, you're very gently manipulating the lid round without causing any additional damage, without causing any additional stretching. Hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on your lid as possible. And I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow. Now I always start on the outer edge, because if you do happen to put too much pigment down, it's much, much easier to deal with that when you don't have your nose in the way. So how's your day been so far today? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't been a good one, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is a better one for you. Did you have a good festive break over Christmas and New Year, if you celebrate those? Or uh, if you were celebrating Hanukkah? Or was Diwali on then as well? Or Chinese New Year, the Lunar New Year, which obviously is coming up. This is building up really nicely. Obviously it's a very, very pale pastel shade, which on anybody of the lovely deep melanin, this will probably look a bit ashy on you. But it is a grey toned lilac, so that's only to be expected, I suppose. She does these in... Um, in two different sizes. This is the normal size with the 26mm pans. She also does what she calls the half size one with 15mm pans which I think is a great idea because obviously you know even if you haven't got that many eyeshadow palettes the likelihood of actually finishing one is pretty rare so I think it's great that she gives you the option of buying a, a smaller pan. So if you have got a lot of palettes or um, if you don't wear makeup that often, you can uh, you know, just buy smaller pans. I think it's a great idea. She's, um, she's a Russian based company um, and I 
The loose pigments I bought from her from Etsy. I couldn't actually find the palettes on her Etsy page though with these pressed pigments in. So that I had to go to her website for. Um, but at the top she does give you the option. There's a button there where you can click at the top and it changes the majority of the text or at least everything you need to know from Russian to English. I apologise if you heard that hiccup. Just had um, a sip of drink while I was zooming you in. And uh, I do sometimes get a hiccup when I drink through a straw because of all the extra air that you take in. And yes, it's a silicon straw. It's my Sammy the Sloth straw. Isn't he cute? Look. You can see him nice and close up now. Okay. That is actually a really pretty shade. Obviously it's taken a little bit of work to build it up. But I wasn't putting that much onto the brush anyway. Um, and like I said, it is a, a pastel. I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth. I don't use colour switches anymore. They're far too harsh on your brushes. Especially if you've got natural hair. I mean, these are spectrum, so they're, these are um, synthetic. <clears throat> But yeah, I wouldn't advise colour switch. You're better off wiping it on a piece of tissue than you are a colour switch, to be honest. Right, I'm going to go into shade number one. A little bit more kick up in that shade. And this is a, a light grey, like a dove grey. And I'm going to pop this up, sort of... I'm going to start just above where my natural crease falls. So it should hopefully blend in nicely into this. And just give it a little bit more depth through because obviously I, I like to keep deeper colours closer to the crease whenever possible because it's especially important if you if you've had to move your crease um, always put the darkest colour through wherever you've moved your crease to um, and I'll tell you when we get to that shade don't worry because doing that, anything dark recedes and anything light comes forward. So it just helps to um, enhance the this bit of the eyes further back, which obviously is the, f the effect you want to give through your crease, particularly if you, as I said, if you have had to move it. So you can see I was sort of blending that to about halfway and then just whatever was left on the brush lightly dragging it across and then very very light tiny tiny circles there because I want to keep the majority of the colour to the outside edge here. I'm just going to start I always do this because I can't always guarantee that I can wear eyeliner. Um, <clears throat> since having fibre on my eyes are very, very watery. So I always try and just flick the outside edge up. And obviously I go in and tidy up with um, my cellar water on a cotton pad before I put my foundation on but it, it just starts to give that similar effect that a wing liner does and if you can achieve it with your shadows not only is it great for if you're learning how to do wing liner because you can put it on with your shadow and then just follow where your shadow is as to where to put your gel or liquid or whatever type of liner you're going to go for uh, but also if you're 
like me and you have particularly watery eyes and there are days when you know there is absolutely no hope in hell of you being able to keep anything anywhere near sort of you know the edge of your your eyes you know, you know it's just going to irritate the heck out of them and, um, and you can you can still have that same lifted youthful effect just by manipulating how the shadows look oh, I quite like this they've blended together really nicely that's a lovely soft grey that really is nice, I like that right give this brush a clean off and then rather than using a round brush like I have been using I'm going to change to the A06 which if you can see is more of an oval brush the ferrule here is pinched flat so it gives you more of an oval shape and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to keep this as close into the crease as I possibly can because I still want to be able to see some of this lovely lilac or grey that we just put down. So I'm going to go into shade number four which is the other or the final matte in this. I like the fact that this is half matte half shimmer. I'm just tapped off really well because I don't know how well this is going to perform because we all know purples are difficult. In the viewfinder here that is looking a bit patchy but in my mirror it really isn't so that's one of the problems unfortunately of filming in HD. So like I said I'm going to hold this flat and initially I'm just going to do circular movements on the crease and on the outer edge of the mobile lid. If you've moved your crease, this is the shade that you need to put to wherever you have moved your crease. So I'm just going to really soften this on the edge. And again, start to get that flick going. We had an okay Christmas. Um, we got put into tier 4 which kind of scuppered all of our plans because so we had to go shooting out to go and get food for Christmas Day because um, we'd originally planned to go to the mother-in-law's. As it was I had to go up and see her that day anyway because my cellulitis was so bad. I just I wanted her to have a look at it and tell me whether it would be okay to wait until the doctors opened because I didn't want to go anywhere near the out of hours doctors which is in the um, the hospital. I didn't want to go anywhere near that unless I absolutely have to. They're busy enough as it is dealing with COVID patients and all the other things they have to deal with this time of year, you know. Pensioners with pneumonia, pensioners that have had a fall and fractured hips and car accidents and all sorts. So I ended up popping up so she could have a look at it. And uh, she said, yeah, she thinks it was okay, but she wanted me to stay there for a bit so she could keep an eye on it. So we ended up having lunch at Mum's and then coming back again in the afternoon. Because she wanted to make sure that it wasn't... Um, leaking too much fluid, you know. So, I mean, Chris is very good, he changes my dressings for me. But she just. She wanted to change the dressing herself so she could see 
exactly how much was actually coming out of the leg rather than so she said she wanted to monitor it for a few hours I'm like, oh, it's not we're going to be eating tonight then, babe. And she went, you, look, if you're going to be here for two hours, she said, well, I'll look at this, you might as well have lunch here. Uh, Brother-in-law stuck a few more veg on. Because obviously he'd already got a large joint, expecting us to be there anyway. Uh, we ended up coming home with a big chunk of it. Which was nice, we had that in the evening. And we ended up roasting ours uh, the day after New Year's Day. Stuff that we'd got for Christmas. Because, um, Abby was working New Year's Day, so. And unfortunately, my days of standing in the kitchen cooking. Unfortunately, long gone, but seeing as how I've had that responsibility since I was 13 and my mum had like a mini nervous breakdown and just gave up, I guess after 30 odd years of doing it, I was due for a bit of a break, what do you reckon? I uh, had an interesting time at school. Trying to do the schoolwork and then coming home and doing the evening meal and the laundry and the ironing and my homework and the housework. Deep joy. Oh well, maybe into the person I am, I suppose. I'm really liking how soft. These pigments are, they're really blending so nicely together. Even this, I mean this is quite a difficult shade of purple as well. The most difficult colours to create are blues and greens and purples and to a certain extent red. So if you've got a very blue toned purple, which this is, um, you know, it's not berry toned at all, it's definitely a blue toned purple. These are one of the most difficult shades to create, especially in a pressed pigment. Um, and this is just really lovely. Lovely and soft and it's blending out without any problems at all. You can see again, I'm just dragging that through. When I put the shimmer onto the lid here. I don't know if you can see that um, I've got super super deep creasing just there on the inner corner there. That's where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old and I'm trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly and um, I have to break the rule that I tell you never to do which is don't ever stretch your lid out um, unfortunately I have to because if I don't what happens is that the pigment settles into those creases and then as it dries through the day it ends up flaking into my eye and down my face and it's both painful and unsightly. I like this colour so much I just keep building it up and adding more and more and more. But it's a... Uh, a good sign that it is actually blending without any skipping at all. That's jolly good indeed. Right, and like I said, there's there's two shimmers and a duochrome in this palette. And obviously you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, but once the pigment is on the brush, I will be wetting it with this. This is just makeup position fix fit, fit fix, whatever. Um, you can use any spray. You can use a priming spray, a setting spray, a, 
finishing spray, a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. You can even just save an empty bottle and put fresh water in each time. Right, so these are these shades. These are the two shimmers and this is the duochrome. Can you see it goes from like a purple to a silvery green almost? Can you see that on that ring finger? Really, really pretty. I've got to go for that duochrome, haven't I? It's got to be done. Just clean that off the back of my hand, otherwise I know what I'm like. I'll end up wiping it up my face at any more opportune moment. Right, I'm going to grab a flat brush like this to pick the pigment up with. This is the Spectrum A16 if you're wondering. Very, very soft pressed pigment. Don't need to push very hard onto it at all to get the pigment onto the brush as you can see. Come on. Right, now this ferrule is now wet. So I'm going to stick it into the crease of my knuckle and just spin because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds the bristles because then you're not going to have a brush, you're going to have a very expensive stick. Right, let's see how well this performs. I don't do cut creases as a rule the first time I use a pigment like this. because I want, or a glitter glue, because I want to see just how well it performs on its own. I'm just going to dry the brush, I'm going to try applying it dry. I normally wet them just because, partly because it can give additional shine to them but also it can help minimise fallout but it would seem that this particular one, this duochrome at least actually performs better when it's dry That's super pretty. Now obviously as I said with the other eye, I will show you how I stretch my lid out and cause as little additional damage as possible. So you don't want to pull your eye out past your ear roll. Literally just pull it out enough to straighten the creases. And I'm going to apply pigment to that area. Making sure it's well blended onto the lid. And then gently let go, not just let go so it pings back and then just apply some more to the remainder of the lid you can see this lid moves significantly more than this one did because it's been pulled around so much when I was younger so that just goes to show you the damage that can be done so don't pull your lid around please unless you have the same problem that I do already. That is such a pretty... I wonder how it would look if I just... Think that's made much difference at all, has it? 
which is a good thing because normally I've got false nails on so I don't want to go digging my nails into my palette and then what I do to neaten the edges up get a pad with some micellar water on and just running up the outside like so now yes you could use tape but my view is if the tape is sticky enough to stop the pigment from going underneath the edge of it then it's likely to be sticky enough to pull that delicate skin around your eye which we don't want so my lovelies I am going to pause you while I pop some foundation and whatnot on and I will be back to finish off this eye look now for me there's going to be a little bit of a wait before I can speak to you again but for you my lovelies it is going to be absolutely blooming instant so I'll see you right now hello I am back I did my usual soap brows and I used the deepest shade here to colour them in okie dokie flat topped brush going into that deeper shade again so I know this is Will's favourite part just going to pop this along the lower lash line. This is also a really good trick where if you can't put anything in your waterline because of watery eyes, you can still finish the eye look off by doing this. I mean, you can do this and put stuff in your waterline, but this is this is a very good way of giving a similar effect of emphasising your eyes and making them a focal part. Hmm. And then I'm going to get a chunky brush this is the Spectrum A13 and I'm going to go into shade 6, this one, this, sh this shimmer on the bottom and obviously I've got to be very very careful because the last thing I want is a load of shimmer down here now I've set everything and I'm just going to use this shade to very softly buff out that lower lash line just give a little added pop of colour don't take it up any further than the edge of your eye otherwise it's going to start impacting on the wing effect that you've done with the shadow Same thing this side. Yes, I flinch more this side because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision and uh, I'm kind of relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's far too far away for comfort when I haven't got either a contact lens in this side or my glasses on. Such a pretty purpley pink. Right. Now this is a very cheap lip brush that I got from eBay. Gosh, probably well over ten years ago now. 
and I actually managed to pick up one of the MAC Christmas highlights. Look at that. This is in the shade Let It Glow Extra Dimension Skin Finish. And whilst trying to disturb as little of the pattern as possible. I'm just going to run this along under the tail of my brow because apparently, ladies and gents, gravity hits our brows as well. Oh, that's just great. You can do this with a matte shade, two or three shades lighter than your skin tone if you would prefer, but I like to not just glow to the gods, I like to dazzle them so they can't see what I'm up to. And I'm going to pop this on the inner corner and just bring it along under the tear duct. Just blend it in to those colours that we've blended under the eye. You don't have to bring it down like I do. I just think it finishes my eye shape off nicely. You can just do the inner corner because all of us have like a darker dimple just here each side. So adding just a bit of brightness in there really helps to again open the eyes up, give them a youthful look look. Right my lovelies, I'm going to pause you for a one last time. Uh, I'm going to chuck some more of this on my face because, uh, well it wouldn't be me if I didn't. Uh, I'm going to bung some mascara on, choose a lippy and I haven't decided whether I'm going to go bold or neutral so place your bets. Have a, have a pause this because obviously it's going to be instant again. I should be back like that for you. Um, pause it and uh, just let me know in the comments box whether you think I'm going a neutral lip or colourful lip. Just to see whether you get it right or not. Right, my lovelies, see you right now. Yes, right? Okay. <clears throat> Obviously, I've chucked the highlight everywhere. Um, I did have a weeping eye moment, which I had to uh, kind of fix. So I'm kind of popping the fringe there, hoping it'll cover up the worst of it. Um, I used my Catrice... Glamour Doll Volume Waterproof oh. Mascara, dupe for Bad Gal Bang, but cheaper and waterproof. Um, the lippy is Melt by Starlight, and it's a bullet lippy rather than a liquid lippy, which I just thought teamed really nicely with this particular palette, which I've used all of the shades today except for that one there so I really like this palette it blended out so nicely I mean obviously with it being a six pan palette you are going to be limited to the number of looks the number of different looks you can create with it however each of the mattes can be built up to perform on their own and you could quite easily do a single shadow, shimmer on the lid, maybe smudge a bit of darker at the outside edge and you know you're off. So you know you, you, there's, there's a good few looks you can get out of it but obviously it is only a six pan palette. 
That being said, it's a very nice little palette. Brilliant size for when we can start travelling again because it's smaller than the size of my hand, you know. Um, so in terms of packing it, yes it doesn't have a mirror on it, but is that, does that really matter? I mean, wherever you go you're going to have a mirror somewhere. Um, you know, my, my MAC highlight has got a mirror. My butter bronzer, in which I have a magnificent pan, look at that, has got a mirror. So, does it really matter that you haven't got a mirror on that? No, not really. Um, you know, if you are travelling, most of us do our makeup either at the dressing table in the bedroom, in which case you'll have a big mirror in front of you, or in the bathroom in which case there's a big mirror in front of you so um, I really like it I'm extremely happy with the look that I have managed to achieve and uh, providing this continues to wear well and then I can see this becoming quite a, a popular palette of mine um, as I've said this year, I'm intending to use more of the palettes that I've got rather than buying new ones. Although <clears throat> I have just bought the two new e.l.f. four pans. I wouldn't mind, but I still haven't got round to trying rose water yet. Which looks like that. Um, but they've got two limited edition ones coming out that are mint. One is all shades of green, one has got some neutrals with a pop of mint, so I've got both of those on the way to me. So, that's a completely different film, however. Do I recommend this palette? So far, yes. Um, I'm going to try this month to do a roundup at the end of the month on palettes that I've used, so that I can give you more feedback on how well it lasts. That being said, when I put the photos up on Insta, if it doesn't last well or if it does fade or if it does get muddy, then I'll let you know on there. So it's always worth checking out my Instagram and uh, seeing if there are any notes on the looks. Right, my lovelies, that's it for this film. Um, if you are one of my 4F babies, please check you're still subscribed. And uh, please double check your notifications are still set to all. Even though YouTube don't appear to be sending emails right now, they are still deleting a lot of you. And uh, they're leaving my films in your suggested, so it's not obvious. That you've been deleted and should they start sending emails again if your notifications don't say all you won't get any of them um, if you're new here and you've tripped over me some other way hi hello welcome I hope you enjoyed it here I'm a little husky today for which I apologize it's been about a week and a half since I last filmed and I've got out of the habit of talking this much, where I sort of pretty much self-isolated every day. I don't normally have this much conversation in one go. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, if you've enjoyed this slight madness that you've experienced today, and the dulcet tones with which I have uh, witted away at you, it would be lovely if you two would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on the internet and it's super easy to do. You just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, <laughs> oh, and choose all notifications in the hope that we're going to get some again soon. In the meantime, 
if you're looking for a little bit of me time, if you've been pushed into tier 4, if, if tier 5 has happened by the time this goes, or if we've all been completely locked down and you are being driven crazy and you just want a little bit of time to yourself, as I've said now for what seems like time immemorial, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, and just indulge for however long you need to, to ease your stresses. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now. I'll try not to bring the frog with me next time. <laughs>